Rai and Karima Chopra, a PhD student at the University of Essex. This talk will be on a study investigating the social network of cows. Understanding the social structure of dairy cattle at an individual level could help optimise their management. For example, how dairy cows are susceptible to health conditions. Mobility scoring is often used involving observations, but is subjective and prone to error. It is particularly important to detect early warning signs as the industry is continually growing for a herd's health and welfare and to optimise milk production. Precision livestock farming uses continuous automated technology and can be used to collect behavioural data and can be analysed using social network analysis. This technique is used across multiple disciplines, including sociology and computer science. Following Holly Hodges' research, who conducted a similar study for her PhD, in this study we investigate the social structure and consistency of a large house dairy herd using data collected via a local positioning system. We assess whether inter-individual variation and sociality is present and whether the herd is socially assorted by lameness, parity and days in milk. We tracked 92 cows, a part of a larger herd group, in a barn using a wireless local positioning system throughout October 2014. Fixes were every 10 seconds. Sensors were attached to cows using neck collars. Cows were assigned a mobility score over three fortnightly sessions. For the following methodology, the barn was split into the feeding zone and the non-feeding zone. The data was pre-processed, which involved the removal of nonsensical data points. We also smoothed the data to reduce noise. In total, approximately 4% of data points were removed, and 28 days remained for analysis. Interactions were calculated between all possible dyads using a criteria of 2 metres for at least 8 seconds. We tested for differences in individual daily interactions and for preferential associations. We assessed whether differences in daily interactions were present between days and assessed the stability of the network structure using the mantle test which accounts for the non-independence of dyads. Daily interactions and clustering coefficient, which measures how central an individual is positioned in a network, were compared between lame and non-lame cows. We also tested for social assortment by individual level characteristics, lameness, parity and days in milk, via mantle tests. The graph on the left shows the social network structure of the full barn over one day, the 1st of October, it shows the 92 cows were highly connected, and this was the case throughout the study. When considering the functional zones alone, some cows had significantly more interactions than others. On the right, high temporal variation is shown. Fluctuations in daily interactions were highly correlated in the non-feeding zone, but not in the feeding zone. Temperature was found to be weakly, but non-significantly correlated with daily interactions. Cows showed significant preferential social assortment in the full barn and both functional zones. There was no clear assortment by lameness, parity or days in milk, but lame cows had a higher clustering coefficient in the feeding zone, showing they adopted more central positions in the network. The social network was highly connected and temporally varied, unsurprising given the herd's high stocking density and that the herd was dynamic. Although we found no social assortment by lameness, parity or days in milk, this was perhaps because cows are sought by other attributes such as their energy requirements or life history. Lame cows may have been unwilling to or unable to compete for preferential feeding positions or cubicles. This study demonstrates the use of LPS and social network analysis to aid management. Further studies could better identify true interactions, determine the nature of interactions, and investigate the influence of temperature in more detail, as well as the influence of housing conditions. I would like to thank all farm staff, as well as our funders who made the study possible. Thank you for listening, and please do contact me if you have any questions. My contact details are on the title slide.